Hi everyone, today I am going to be doing uh, some more GMIC tutorials. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't done one for a while. Um, so I wanted to get back into that and try finishing up on some of those. I released a tutorial the other day. It was a requested tutorial. Um, I forget the user's name, but um, he asked me if I would make show him how I did that tutorial in GIMP. So I went ahead and did that and like I said I've been having some issues with my video card so um, I do apologize if these uh, videos aren't 100% uh, the greatest but um, doing my best until the new card that I ordered comes in which should be hopefully tomorrow. Um, but anyways, uh, so we're going to be, we're going to end up making this, uh, today, after I go over a couple of other, um, filters in GMIC, so I'm going to go ahead and go to file, new, oh, and also, I, um, I've been messing around, um, with themes and stuff in Windows 8 and uh, I do apologize if some of this stuff is hard to read um, like I said I've still been messing with it I haven't uh, changed everything and I'm still figuring out how to get rid of this stuff but anyways let's go ahead and I'm going up to file new and I'm just gonna open up a 640 by 480 template and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy that color real quick and it's just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use blue get grab my paintbrush and make the size a little bit bigger and I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and I'm just gonna I don't know color something like that and go ahead and make another new layer press OK and change the color to maybe this green oops let's see. Let's uh, control Z that. Let's put this layer under the blue layer. And now let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to make one more. Press OK. And let's put that one under that green layer. And let's go ahead and grab a different color. And let's just go ahead and fill this in like that. Let's go to this green color and let's go up to filters, uh, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll blur it by nine. And then let's go back to the blue one and do the same. We could just press control F and that will uh, do the last filter that you used. And we are going to go ahead and delete that background layer and we could go ahead and let's go ahead and go up here to layer new from visible and then let's go to filters and then down to gmic and let's open up gmic and we're still in arrays and tiles and the next one is extract objects so on this one basically um, the settings you have your you could set your background, um, the X and Y of your background, which mainly it's got a green dot here and it shows you where it's placing your background and how it's going to come out and stuff. And then we got a color tolerance, which right here we just got basic colors. And what I'm trying to do is go ahead and get this blue off of what we just made. You go ahead and raise up the minimal and we'll leave connectivity at low and segmentation that's just the output as it's gonna segment it and you could crop it do a located crop a located segmentation but I'll just leave it at standard and let's hit apply let's go ahead and close out of this Oops and as you can tell we got almost all of that color out of that image 
so basically all that filter does is if you have an object that you want to try to remove um, I've tried it on a few things I, I'm gonna tell the truth I'm not really a big fan of this filter um, but it does work for some simple things like this uh, it didn't get it all out but you could go back in you could press uh, control Z and go back in and go to filter reshow gmic and you can fiddle with these settings a little bit more to try to pull that color out of there um, and then the next one is grid and that is pretty standard uh, you could have a grid size of 10 by 10 if you'd like and we can go ahead and we're gonna just go be active as default we're gonna go ahead and put this in a new layer on the input output and we'll do we'll start with the 10 by 10 and just hit apply and as you can see let's go ahead and turn all this off it made a grid over this color layer and if I turn it back on it's got a pretty cool grid effect on there and it made transparency on this one so I mean this this is a alright filter if you want to make grids and do some kind of cool like pixelated looking effect and stuff like that it's pretty self-explanatory so I'm gonna go ahead and control Z that one and let's see which one's next and sorry I move if I'm moving a little bit too fast just leave a comment down below the video and I will go back through these but as you can see it's just cutting up um, a grid like pattern into this image so the next one is the montage and I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel for that one and I'm gonna exit out of that and we're gonna go to filter and new and I'm gonna do a 1920 by 1080 press OK and f for this um, effect I just put together a few images and <clears throat> I tweaked them around they're not nothing special I just uh, they were uh, images that I had that I use for when I make uh, wallpapers and stuff like that and I just added a bokeh uh, effect in the background they were PNG images uh, with transparency so I just added the bokeh effect and alright so we're on this new document uh, the 1920 by 1080 so I'm gonna go up to file and open as layers and I got six images here like I said that I made so I'm just gonna uh, click on one then hold control and then click on all the rest of them and then click on open oops I didn't want to bring that one in there so we're gonna delete that one and so I got six images here and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this background too and then I'm gonna right click and add an alpha channel to these because they were saved as JPEGs and JPEG don't have alpha so we're gonna add an alpha channel to all of these alright and like I said they're just uh, they're just basic images with a bokeh effect behind them. They're images of all different sizes. So let's go ahead and go up to filters. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and click on this bottom one and then go to filters, GMIC. And let's go ahead and go into the montage. And the preview size is large. Let's expand this out a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that like that. And I'm going to just go ahead and click reset because those aren't 
the same settings that I had before and as you can tell uh, I don't know if you guys have seen any other tutorials on this but it basically tiles all of them and the only reason the reason why you're only seeing one of the images is because you need to go over here to the input and then go down to all and there you go and then it collects all the uh, layers that you have over here in your layer panel so we have one two three four five and for some reason it's not showing all the images two three four five six anyways we'll go ahead and mess with that but as you can see the montage all that does is just it tiles the images in different shapes it's got um, we can do a horizontal array there's all the images uh, these are some presets that they got the vertical array um, then you just got horizontal and that lines them up all horizontally and then vertically and then you got your custom layout and here you change them right here and it's got some instructions down here I haven't really read them um, but I think this is Python if I'm but anyways so you go ahead and the V is for vertically H is for horizontally uh, 0 is for picture 0 1 is for picture 1 um, and then you got your height again or your horizontal sorry and then two is for this image and then vertically and then three and four so you got those images there and you got your centering and your scale and your padding so you got your centering you can it's not doing too much right here for these ones so I'm just gonna put it back at point 50 and you got your padding and it just separates the images and it gives more padding in between your images so I'm gonna put this on four and then if you want to put a frame around your images see it added a frame to it that is fine uh, personally I, I don't like that look but if you do you could add your a frame to it and then you could change your color here you make them whatever color you want red uh, kind of like a golden color if you want um, that's totally up to you but I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on black and then here you could change your angle of your images you could move them all around different ways if you'd like it's pretty self-explanatory um, the only thing that is a little difficult to understand is this up here and you just have to play with that uh, cause I'm not too familiar with the programming language for GIMP um, I play with it a little bit but not too much um, but I will give you a code that I used for this um, and it will work for other images uh, as well and then you got your angle variations which is basically you leave the angle off and you use the angle variations and it will just go through and it will compute different variations for all your images and it will move them around more randomly and I like this effect personally and then the cycle layers is you move that and you can move which images you want placed where and, and all that and then you got your single layer so if you go ahead and hit apply it's going to apply everything and it's going to flatten the image to one image and then you got multiple layers which means that uh, once you hit apply each photo will be on its own layer individual layer that way you can move it around so I'm gonna go ahead and reset this again and I'm gonna go over here to my other screen and I'm going to grab this custom layout that I got and I'm going to go ahead and hit update 
So once you mess with this, so I got vertically, uh, and then horizontally, and then I got the uh, image four up in the top corner, um, image two and three across here, and then zero one right here, <clears throat> and then five and six at the bottom. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and it added this one again extra. But I wanted this effect because I wanted this image in here again because this is my favorite one out of all of them. And we're just going to go ahead and go down through here real quick. And I'm going to put a padding of four. Is it frame? I don't want to frame. And then we're going to do angle variation. Um, let's go 12.65 see what that is and that moves them a little like that and then like I said you could use this cycle layers if you'd like but I'm gonna go ahead and just go right here and I'm gonna hit um, multiple layers and we're gonna hit apply and I'm gonna show you what this does wait for it to load So it put everything on its own individual layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little. And I'm going to show you what it done. So basically, if you see, it put every image on its own layer. And if you want, you could go ahead and press M on your keyboard and grab your move tool and then you can move them around like that and then just go ahead and click on a different layer and move that and you could rotate it. And it's just a very easy shortcut um, because it automatically resizes the images and moves them around for you and it saves you a lot of work. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z all this. And let's see what images we got here. Got that one. That one. Okay. Wow, edit. Undo history. Let's check the history. Let's go all the way back to the base image. Hmm. Alrighty. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out real quick. Because for some reason, new. File. Let's go back up file, open as layers. Let's go ahead and just hold down control and click on all these. Let's open them up real quick. I'm going to go ahead and go through and do this all real quick because you guys seen this all already. And for some reason, my computer is acting up. Delete that background. Okay, this is we're back to where we started. Let's go back to filters, GMIC. And let's go ahead and reset everything. <clears throat> and we're going to stay on custom layout. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that custom lay, layout back in there and hit update. And we're going to do a padding of four and we're going to go back through this and we're going to play with these angle variations so I want them more angled let's play with the angle a little bit
I don't want any of the images straight, really. Let's go back. Let's move the angle back a little bit. And we could go ahead and we could cycle through these layers and see which images move. And just play around with this until we get something we like. Zero, let's change the angle. Alrighty, I like that. And let's go back to multiple layers and let's go ahead and hit apply again. And wait for this to do its magic. That. Let's go ahead and close this and let's control Z that and let's go back bring back reshow GMIC real quick and it's gonna be on the same settings and I'm gonna just go ahead and put this back to in place back on the default because that we had changed it to new layers and I want to do that and then let's go ahead and hit apply again. There we go. That's what I wanted it to do. Let's wait for it to finish. And let's close out of that. And there we go. Sorry about that. Go ahead and zoom out. I'm using control on my mouse wheel. And so, see, <clears throat> now we have all these images. They're scaled for you. They're moved around. They're angled and everything. And now we could, like I said, just hit the move tool. And let's go ahead and move everything around and place it how you want it and you could still rotate these and everything else if you'd like just gonna go ahead and move these closer into each other should I leave that one right there let's go ahead and Move her closer, move this one down, and move this one in a little bit, just like that. And now we're going to go up to Layer, New from Visible, and we're going to go back to Filters, and we're going to go back to GMIC. and we're gonna go down to lights and shadows open it up and we're gonna go to drop shadow and the settings that I have for this drop shadow is 2 2 on the they're both 2 on the X and the Y and then on the smoothness we want it's the same settings you see on the screen 1.60 and the curvature let's change that just a little bit give it a second to work 0 0.06 corner brightness is at 0 and the angle is at 0 if you move the angle it will move the whole image and let's go ahead and hit apply Give it a second to do its magic. And then 
let's go ahead and close out of this and I'm gonna hold down shift and just click on this eyeball to turn everything else off and I'm gonna zoom in using control on my mouse wheel you could use shift plus if you'd like and then uh, the minus on your keyboard to zoom back out and I'm using the middle mouse button to pan and as you can see we have some nice shadows set up here now um, and the images are set the way that we want them so what I went ahead and did was I went and made a second one I just went through the same process that I did I just opened a new uh, image file and I went through the same process that I just showed you guys and I went through and I made something different than what I did the previous one and placed them different and stuff like that and then I went ahead and I right clicked and I went to uh, edit and I went copy visible and then I went over here and I went right clicked and went down to edit paste as new layer and I move this layer below just like that and we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer and we're gonna move that layer below the top two layers remember all the rest of our layers are turned off so it's gonna be below let's go ahead and <coughs> name this uh, well let's leave that one the standard name and then this one's clipboard uh, we can well I guess we could leave that clipboard no let's name that to uh, montage 2 and then our layer right here we'll just put BG for background and let's go over here and grab the color and the color that I'm using for the background is D E F F F F press OK and let's go ahead and grab our paint bucket tool and let's go ahead and fill in the background and let's go to our montage 2 layer and press M on your keyboard to grab the move tool and we are going to place this layer on hard light and we're going to lower the opacity down to let's see what I set this one on to 40 around 40 so that's pretty close Go around 40 on this one and you just place this one however you'd like in the background because we are going to go ahead and press control shift D and we're going to duplicate that and we're going to move it down a little bit and we're going to press shift R on our keyboard and we are going to rotate it eh, about like that is fine and press M on your keyboard to grab up the move tool and we're going to place this like that and we're going to move this layer below the top layer and we are going to raise this one up to about 55 to 60 the opacity of it I, I mean and there you go you got a pretty cool looking simple montage and if my computer wasn't messing up we would have had that done in no time and I imagine that this uh, for a G mix short is going to be a long one um, I do apologize for that but I just wanted to show you guys how to use these couple of filters that we went through so let's go back through them we went uh, through the extract objects which that one like I said it's it's uh, pretty self-explanatory let's go back to input layers it's pretty self-explanatory um, basically you just you're telling it where to place uh, this dot and then you got your color tolerance 
and your opacity threshold and stuff and then your minimal area and your connectivity is low high um, it says filter explained here you copy the URL and uh, control V and that's what I thought the link is dead but anyways basically that's what it is it's you're trying to extract something um, off of your background uh, so you just have to play with that like I said I don't I'm not too fond of this this uh, filter right here um, it don't work all that well in my opinion um, so when I go to extract an object from something or whatever I do it manually because there's nothing better than that and no programs gonna be able to do really with what you want uh, with with some kind of plugin I mean there are plugins out there that are pretty good but there's not no just one one and done plugin out there really um, so and then we went through the grid and then like I said the grid just places a grid on the image and it kinda pixelates it and stuff like that um, so you could play around with that it's pretty self-explanatory we could make a grid size of 20 by 10 and make them kind of back into rectangles and stuff you could do some pretty cool effects from that too and then we went down to the montage the montage is what I really wanted to show you guys and then uh, you could go through and uh, see how we have this one we could go ahead and make a montage uh, of this one if we'd like to and uh, you could oops let's see active we we'll go back to all and you can make a montage of all this stuff and you could do even more cooler stuff you know, just uh, imagination that's all it is to use these and you could make something cool and then we went over the drop shadow a uh, little bit but the drop shadow is pretty self-explanatory uh, the reason why I'm making these tu tutorials to is to explain some of the more harder ones um, and to give you guys my review on it and what I use them for um, I don't necessarily know if exactly if that's what a lot of these plugins are used for but they're what I use for my everyday pipeline so I hope this helps. If there's any tutorials that you guys want made, just let me know in the uh, description below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and there will be tons more to come. Thank you. Have a good day.